Sir John Richard Hicks, the 8th of April 1904 to the 20th of May 1989, was a British economist. He was considered one of the most important and influential economists of the 20th century. The most familiar of his many contributions in the field of economics were his statement of consumer demand theory in microeconomics and the IS LM model 1937, which summarized a Keynesian view of macroeconomics. His book Value and Capital 1939 significantly extended general equilibrium and value theory. The compensated demand function is named the Hicksian demand function in memory of him. In 1972 he received the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences jointly for his pioneering contributions to general equilibrium theory and welfare theory. Topic: <laughs> Early life. Hicks was born in 1904 in Warwick, England, and was the son of Dorothy Catherine Stevens and Edward Hicks, a journalist at a local newspaper. He was educated at Clifton College 1917 to 1922 and at Balliol College, Oxford 1922 to 1926, and was financed by mathematical scholarships. During his school days and in his first year at Oxford, he specialized in mathematics but also had interests in literature and history. In 1923, he moved to philosophy, politics and economics, the new school that was just being started at Oxford. He graduated with second-class honours and, as he stated, no adequate qualification in any of the subjects that he had studied. Topic career From 1926 to 1935, Hicks lectured at the London School of Economics and Political Science. He started as a labour economist and did descriptive work on industrial relations but gradually, he moved over to the analytical side, where his mathematics background returned to the fore. Hicks's influences included Lionel Robbins and such associates as Friedrich von Hayek, R.G.D. Allen, Nicholas Kaldor, Abba Lerner and Ursula Webb, the last of whom, in 1935, became his wife. From 1935 to 1938, he lectured at Cambridge where he was also a fellow of Gonville and Keyes College. He was occupied mainly in writing Value and Capital, which was based on his earlier work in London. From 1938 to 1946, he was professor at the University of Manchester. There, he did his main work on welfare economics, with its application to social accounting. In 1946, he returned to Oxford, first as a research fellow of Nuffield College 1946 to 1952, then as Drummond Professor of Political Economy 1952 to 1965, and finally as a research fellow of All Souls College 1965 to 1971, where he continued writing after his retirement. Topic. Later life Hicks was knighted in 1964 and became an honorary fellow of Lineker College. He was co-recipient of the Nobel Prize in Economic Sciences with Kenneth J. Arrow in 1972. He donated the Nobel Prize to the London School of Economics and Political Sciences Library Appeal in 1973. He died on 20 May 1989 at his home in the Cotswold village of Blockley. Topic. Contributions to economic analysis Hicks's early work as a labor economist culminated in the theory of wages 1932, second ed. 1963, still considered standard in the field. He collaborated with R. G. D. Allen in two seminal papers on value theory published in 1934. His magnum opus is Value and Capital published in 1939. The book built on ordinal utility and mainstreamed the now standard distinction between the substitution effect and the income effect for an individual in demand theory for the two-good case. It generalized the analysis to the case of one good and a composite good, that is, all other goods. It aggregated individuals and businesses through demand and supply across the economy. It anticipated the aggregation problem, most acutely for the stock of capital goods. It introduced general equilibrium theory to an English-speaking audience, refined the theory for dynamic analysis, and for the first time attempted a rigorous statement of stability conditions for general equilibrium. In the course of analysis Hicks formalized comparative statics. In the same year, he also developed the famous compensation criterion called Caldor-Hicks efficiency for welfare comparisons of alternative public policies or economic states. Hicks's most familiar contribution in macroeconomics was the Hicks Hansen is LM model, published in his paper, Mr. Keynes and the Classics, a suggested interpretation. This model formalized an interpretation of the theory of John Maynard Keynes, see Keynesian economics, and describes the economy as a balance between three commodities money, consumption, and investment. 
Hicks himself wavered in his acceptance of his ISLM formulation. In a paper published in 1980, he dismissed it as a classroom gadget. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Contributions to interpretation of income for accounting purposes. Hicks's influential discourse on income sets the basis for its subjectivity but relevancy for accounting purposes. He aptly summarized it as follows. The purpose of income calculations in practical affairs is to give people an indication of the amount they can consume without impoverishing themselves. Formally, he defined income precisely in three measures. Hicks's number one measure of income, the maximum amount, which can be spent during a period if there is to be an expectation of maintaining intact the capital value of prospective receipts in money terms Hicks, 1946, p. 173 Hicks's number two measure of income market price neutral, the maximum amount the individual can spend during a week, and still expect to be able to spend the same amount in each ensuing week Hicks, 1946, p. 174 Hicks's number three measure of income takes into account market prices, the maximum amount of money which an individual can spend this week, and still expect to be able to spend the same amount in real terms in each ensuing week Hicks, 1946, p. 174. See also Selected publications 1932, Second Ed. 1963, The Theory of Wages, London, Macmillan. 1934, A Reconsideration of the Theory of Value, with R. G. D. Allen, Economica. 1937, Mr. Keynes and the Classics: A Suggested Interpretation, Econometrica. 1939, The Foundations of Welfare Economics, Economic Journal. 1939, Second Ed. 1946. Value and Capital. Oxford, Clarendon Press. 1940. The Valuation of Social Income. Economica, 7 to 105 24. 1941. The Rehabilitation of Consumers' Surplus. Review of Economic Studies. 1942. The Social Framework An Introduction to Economics. 1950. A Contribution to the Theory of the Trade Cycle. Oxford, Clarendon Press. 1956. A Revision of Demand Theory, Oxford, Clarendon 1958. The Measurement of Real Income. Oxford Economic Papers 1959. Essays in World Economics, Oxford, Clarendon Press 1961. Measurement of Capital in Relation to the Measurement of Other Economic Aggregates. In Lutz and Haig, Editors, Theory of Capital 1965. Capital and Growth. Oxford, Clarendon Press. 1969. A Theory of Economic History. Oxford, Clarendon Press. Scroll to chapter preview links. 1970. Review of Friedman. Economic Journal. 1973. The Mainspring of Economic Growth. Nobel Lectures, Economics 1969-1980, Editor Asar Lindbeck, World Scientific Publishing Co., Singapore, 1992. 1973. Autobiography for Nobel Prize 1974. Capital Controversies, Ancient and Modern. American Economic Review. 1975. What is Wrong with Monetarism? Lloyd's Bank Review. 1976. Economic Perspectives. Oxford, Clarendon Press. 1979. The Formation of an Economist. Banca Nazionale del Lavoro Quarterly Review, No. 130 September 1979, 195-204 1980. Is L.M. an Explanation? Journal of Post-Keynesian Economics. 1981. Wealth and Welfare, Volume 1 of Collected Essays in Economic Theory. Oxford, Basil Blackwell. 1982. Money, Interest and Wages, Volume 2 of Collected Essays in Economic Theory. Oxford, Basil Blackwell. 1983. Classics and Moderns, Vol. 3 of Collected Essays in Economic Theory. Oxford, Basil Blackwell. 1989. A Market Theory of Money. Oxford University Press. 1990-1991.